Feliz Raginguá and Clementine Wemeria are genocide survivors, each bearing witness to 100 days of bloody terror in 1994, when 800,000 people were murdered in Rwanda. I saw people getting slaughtered. I saw women who were pregnant getting macheted and their babies thrown out onto the trees. Belize was five years old at the time. I didn't understand why people were being killed and in front of my face, like little children being cut and it was just, I will never get those images out of me. Her parents, grandparents, and most of her extended family were killed. Horrific memories will always haunt Clementine, who was just six years old when she hid in a banana tree, listening to the screams as her grandparents' house was burned to the ground. We hid in there for like 20 minutes and everybody that went my grandparents' house, all of them, all of them were, all of them were killed. She and her 16-year-old sister, Claire, were left to fend for themselves. My sister and I just kept hiding, kept hiding. We didn't even know where we were going. They hid for 100 terrifying days, then spent six years in refugee camps across Africa, always looking for their parents. I keep searching, see if I'll see someone that looks like me. Clementine and Belize are now both living in America. Belize came here in 1999, Clementine a year later. Neither spoke a word of English when they arrived. Today, they are among like the, the best students in their schools. Be... Two more voices in a rising chorus of never again. I need to speak out. People need to know the truth. I join with Ella Wiesel in praying that his book will inspire us to change the world one night at a time. Bravo to both of you. So, thanks. Belize, Belize goes to boarding school just out of Chicago and lives with her aunt in Indiana. Belize, you call your aunt mom. And you say, even though you lost most of your family, you still feel like one of the lucky ones. Why? I think that we shouldn't feel sad about what happened. I think that I should be thankful for what I have now because I know that there are so many orphans out there who have nobody. They will never experience what I've experienced in America. And so I feel that I was one of the lucky ones. And I remember in your essay, you compared your father to Elie Wiesel's father. Why so? My father, just like Professor Wiesel, was very optimistic. He didn't believe that his friends, his neighbors, his, he believed in his country. He didn't because believe... you all were warned. Were you not yeah. warned? We were warned, but you couldn't believe that your neighbors and your friends would be killing you the next day, would be turning you in to the police, the militia, or anything. Mm -hmm. I've been watching what's been going on in Sudan, and I think that I was saved for a reason. I think that God saved me because I was left to tell what happened mm -hmm. for those who are silent now, who have no voice. And I think that, as Professor Wazal said, it would be inhuman of us to let the world leaders said, say that never again will this happen when we know today in Sudan, people. People are getting slaughtered daily, and we're doing nothing about it. Yeah. And you also said, you talked about the stars, the stars they had to wear, and compared it to? I compared the stars of, the yellow stars of the Holocaust to the mark. We had identity cards which stated if you were Hutu or Tutsi, and it was a mark of death if you were Tutsi because you didn't know what, was, what to expect. You didn't know what was coming. Well, you knew you were going to be killed. Yeah. And many times, people fled to the churches and were killed in the churches. It, I've recently found out that 
more people died in the churches than anywhere else in the country. And to me, as a Catholic, as a devout Catholic, that's something I can never understand how I can, it's hard for me to go back to a place to pray where so much blood was shed. Because so many priests turned in the people. So Clementine, before you left Africa, did you ever find your parents? No, actually, I just, we just found out in 2001, since 1994, that our parents were alive, which was a miracle, which was we searched, we tried Red Cross, we tried you know, UNICEF, we tried everywhere. My sister and I, we moved everywhere, every day, walking around, it was like searching and searching and searching. So when was the last time you saw them? Well, it was 1994 when I had no idea what was going on. So until 2001, when we met a person who told us that they were alive, and we couldn't believe it that, that they, they had survived. Yes. And you had a, now is it true that you have a brother and sister? Yes, I have a two new siblings that I haven't met yet because mm -hmm. it's been now 12 years since we've been seeing each other. Um, so I have two new siblings that I really don't know. Even I met them, maybe I'll know them. Well, I have a letter from your parents. I have a letter from your parents. Clementine and Claire, come on up here. Claire is Clementine's sister. Hi. Hi, Oliver. Nice to see you, Claire. This is from your family in Rwanda your uh, father and your mother and your sisters and your brother, and I wanted you to read it, okay? Well, you don't have to read it right now in front of all these people. <laughs> you don't have to read it right now in front of all these people because your family is here. We have flown your family here. Thank you.